Hello, bearded bee people. I'm sure you've heard the news as to the change in regulation for oxalic acid use with honey supers on. There's still some confusion left out there as to whether we can use OA with honey supers on yet or not. I'm gonna go through all that today on Being KBs. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about what oxalic acid is, what we use it for currently, and the current state of oxalic acid as a mite treatment in beekeeping in the United States. Oxalic acid is a relative newcomer to the game of mite treatment, and it's taken the industry by storm basically because of its ease of use and the cost effectiveness. The two main application methods currently are sublimation, where we put oxalic acid crystals into a device, heat it up for it to be vaporized into the hive, and the dribble or shop towel method, where we mix it into a solution and offer it into the hive on the bees or on top of the frame. Both of these methods are super effective for the mites that are on the adult bees that are outside of the brood cells walking around those hives. It will kill the vast majority of those mites, but it doesn't kill any of the mites that are attached to larvae underneath brood cappings. So that might mean that it doesn't touch 60 or 70 percent of the overall mites in the colony, which is why we use it usually in times where our colonies don't have a whole lot of brood, and that's usually right after a split or in the spring, fall, or dead of winter. If you are trying to use OA on a colony that does have a bunch of brood, it can be used in a staggered method and be pretty effective in that sense. What we do are three separate treatments six days apart, but I've heard people do four or five, and I've heard them do it three days apart or five days apart or six days apart. The general idea is to continually hit that colony with oxalic acid so that as those new bees start to emerge with those mites on their backs, they are affected by that next round of oxalic acid. If you do this the full staggered treatment, you're actually affecting quite a few of the mites, <clears throat> but it does require you to go back to that colony numerous times over the course of a bunch of days. Up until this point, we've been taught and told that the vapor of this oxalic acid will contaminate the honey and contaminate the wax. Now, some of the leaders in this beekeeping industry have been saying otherwise for a long time, like Randy Oliver, but it took a while for the government to take note of this and to actually test it themselves. Now, test it they did, and they came to the same conclusion that Randy did, in that there is no appreciable contamination of the wax or the honey at all. This means that they changed the regulation. They actually blanket changed it, but the only thing that is keeping us from jumping directly into treating with honey supers on are the bureaucratic red tape things that still have yet to take place. So per Randy Oliver's email to the beekeeping industry, it is illegal right now to use oxalic acid during the summer at all, but especially when honey supers are on, and that we have to wait for registered products and the label change by the EPA. Now, once again, that's all super exciting. It's coming down the pipeline, and it will change the way we look at treating our bees for sure. But once again, uh, there is limited effectiveness in the current application methods of oxalic acid at times when honey supers are on. Just based on the fact that there's so much brood in those colonies at that time, that treating in those current methods is relatively ineffective. Now, I know a lot of beekeepers, some in Texas, that treat OA every single month all year round, and they have some great success with that. Now, you can definitely decide to apply some mindset like that to your beekeeping, or you can do what I'm going to do, and that is definitely use it if that's the necessary thing or if it makes sense in your certain situation, but wait for the complete change of your mite plan uh, to include some of these extended release products that are probably coming down the pipeline. So please, let's follow Randy Oliver's advice and not be pesticide scoff laws. I believe that's what he said we would be if we decided to utilize this OA and say it wasn't for mic control so that we couldn't get prosecuted. Now, you know, once again, that's not cool. We are beekeepers as an industry, so one of us reflects on all of us, so we really do have to be patient here 
and hopeful, hopeful that this is going to change the way we do things in the future, make things cheaper, make things easier, make things just generally easier to, uh, to keep your bees alive, happy, and healthy. So yeah, uh, this is good news. I'm excited about it. I hope you guys are too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button and that notification bell and you'll get notified for other videos as they come out in the future. But otherwise, get out there and have some fun with your bees. See ya.